You just went straight for it. Yeah. Yeah. Say up. <laughs> Could CJ McCullum see another contract extension in New Orleans? I mean, nah. I know that first. can't nothing and nobody fade what we trying to do and what we about to do. Second thing is, we got this game on our level. You understand what I'm saying? Welcome to another episode of In Space. I'm your host, Chris Connor. That's my dog Lito over here. Shout out to shout out to Crystal Hot Sauce. Shout out to all the crystals. Um, you know, we finally out of out of tourist season. We in the we in the Gemini season. Shout out to shout out to my homie, my brother, one of my best friends, Virgil birthday just passed, and my mama birthday tomorrow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's you know up, what mama? Saying? Yeah, you know, what up, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to to uh, Mrs. K surgery tomorrow, man. Shout out to her as well, man. You know, peace it's and tomorrow? blessings, as Lido would say. It is tomorrow. On my mama's birthday, at that. Bet. No, I ain't nothing to the guys. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. But uh, we want we want to talk stuff. You know, we like to think ahead. We like to think way, 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 way down the line. Um, and it's it's. It's the off season for the for the Pelicans for what we do. So this is what we here for. Now, if you watch the previous episodes, um, or the, the last couple that uh, me me and Lito had done, we talked about a Trey Murphy contract extension. We talked about um, there's another one. What was the what was the other one? Uh, we talked about um, we talked about defense. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about defense. We talked about adding guards and and all these conversations. CJ McCollum is connected one way or another. Now, for those that don't know, CJ has two years remaining on his deal in New Orleans. He signed an extension last season or the season before. Mm-hmm. Um, and while we're not there yet, it could be a conversation to be had. So I'm curious um, with the production, and you know, me and Lito are gonna talk between CJ's contract now, his production now, and maybe uh, you know a scenario where he does see another contract in New Orleans. What it might look like, I wouldn't say necessarily numerically, but him just simply from a, from a a roster and a positional standpoint, uh, because I do think, and I think Lito would agree that CJ's game should and will age well it's just a matter if it will happen for um the pelicans Lito, start off by this why is it to you that at this point because if i'd asked you a couple years ago who was more likely to be traded today brandon ingram or cj mccullum you would have probably said How how far how you, how, you said a couple years ago? How many like how how far so, away are we talking? Let's say so. Let's say when CJ when CJ arrived, mm-hmm. and I just said um, we talking twenty twenty four June third. I'd ask you J- June third twenty twenty four. Who's more likely to be traded, Brandon Ingram or CJ McCullough? Who do you think you would have said that? I'd have said CJ. I only ask that because I feel like now, um, and, for, and, and it hasn't been, it's, it's not necessarily just now, but I feel like a lot of people still feel like it's a foregone conclusion, which I don't think is a bad one, a horrible one, that CJ is, um, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time. And I don't think a lot of people are, are talking about the opportunity or the chance of him possibly returning. I, I I don't believe that he is a trade necessarily waiting to happen, even though I could see a scenario when they end up where they end up making a move. Do you what's your thoughts about CJ's value currently in this league and to this team? I think it's still high. I think I think he has a I think you've seen a guy who um transformed his game into possibly being a guy of more value uh who will just live with living on a perimeter taking those perimeter shots um kind of got away from the heliocentric offense that he's been used to throughout his career you got a guy who um for all intents and purposes bought into 
whatever the team needed probably would be the the one thing on any team's roster. You get a guy, a, a veteran to buy in and has the skill set in order to do it. I think the one thing um, for him that – well, there's a couple things. I mean, he hasn't had great health mainly because he's had to bear much of a burden that he didn't sign up to, to haul. <laughs> like, he signed up to be a part of something, not be the focal point. Um, and with that said, he's still done a great job of when Zion and Brandon not aren't available – of leading the team, keeping the keeping the ship steady, I should say. Uh, I think he he his his three point shooting is something that I mean he he broke the franchise record with a, a bunch of games left to go. Um, imagine if he had a guard to get him easy shots. So, and look, I I, I feel like. Um, you know, to me, this conversation, and, you know, I do want everybody to see exactly what I'm talking about in regards to the contract. So if you look here, um, next season, he's up for $33 million. And in his final in, in, in his final year, well, where he would be an expiring deal, he's looking at 30 mil. And you're watching a contract that, that declines from a salary perspective. There's no player options. There's no team options, so on and so forth. And you might look at that and you say that that's a that's a lot of money. But then you look here. And this is currently as was said, currently, before any additional extensions take place, before TV deal and all these things that will happen through throughout the, you know, mm-hmm. uh before CJ's deal ultimately expired. You say he's the 21st projected to be the 21st paid guard next year. He's the 13th best paid guard this year. He's projected to be the 40th best paid NBA player next season. He was 27th this year. Um, and yeah, um, I think that's interesting for, especially for a contract that's declining, Lito, because, you know, yeah, $30 million is a lot of money. But when you look at the overall context of the other situation, and for a dude that we can't act like he didn't produce, did he? make the shots that some people you know you know that we all would have wanted him to make did he take over games uh was you know was he consistently the CJ McCollum that was in some of his days in Portland no was he um um a dude that could go out and win you a playoff game or high intensity game by himself consistently i don't think he was but i also think that he, that doesn't mean that he wasn't worth the you know worth the money that he was paid uh when you talk about the work that he's put in, um, when you talk about the way he changed his game, and ultimately the way that he produced, Lito, you know, you're talking to a dude that um, he averaged 20 points again last season. He's 32 years old. He shot his highest percentage um, in a year in what, like if we're talking in totality, we're talking in three years, or uh, we're talking oh. since he, yeah, since 2021 was when he, the second half of the year in which he uh, arrived in New Orleans. So a couple years, basically, he shot his best three-point percentage. Shit ever. <laughs> On the most shots. <laughs> On the most threes that he's ever taken per game or ever. Played well, 66 second, games. Second second most. Attempts? Yeah, the 8.9 in 2020, 2020, 2021 season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So Damn, second. that's crazy. But yeah, but he shot. Yeah, but he shot his highest. He shot his, his highest percentage. Um, yeah. So you know, we talking to dude that put in the work, was more efficient in a lot of different ways this year. Shot his best free throw percentage since what's this? Twenty eighteen. Am I reading that right? Yep. Eighty two percent. Yeah. Yep. He um you know and 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 honestly, I think his turnovers went down as well. Now look, he made some. You know, you know, some plays that you know, dude of his ability, you would you wouldn't want to see. It's some, you know, some some uh, some interesting or low IQ plays, or you know, things that would make you question what was going on mentally. You could talk about shot selection. You could talk about timely turnovers. You could talk about some of his decisions dribbling the basketball. I don't. I'm not a fan of you know of guards that are his size. Um, 
you know, you know, he don't find Zion on lives. There's a bunch of different things that I could say to create to to talk about CJ. But one of the things that I'm thinking about that I would not throw out, and me and Lito were talking about a little bit, I believe, in the Trey Murphy show, because we're talking about Trey, what what is it gonna look like? What's it gonna take for Trey Murphy to be a starter? If we're looking at what CJ's making right now, and you're talking about a future extension. If the conversation is had for a dude that will be 34, I believe, when that contract is up or about to be 35, and he still wants to play, and he says, I want to return to New Orleans, at some point he's going to transition to a six-man. It's going to mm-hmm. happen, whether it's in New Orleans or someplace else. Mm-hmm. If he if he ultimately says he will be a six-man, Lito, do you think he's more likely to be even more valuable for the Pelicans, and would that create an even better lane for a future contract extension, which again, it's not, it's, we're talking about one more season and then he's, then he's expiring and and he's up to figuring out what his next deal is going to look like. The thing is the very, it's it's all depending on this summer, Uh, uh, depending on who the Pelicans bring into the organization, the the moves that, that get made in order to, for this summer, um, then yes. I think he he has value regardless whether it be with the Pelicans or not with the Pelicans. His value, I don't think it's going to decline. His age is, you know, he's aging, but his his game um, is going to translate wherever he goes. Because the thing now is, you see eight point nine three point attempts on forty three percent shooting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you can look around the NBA and shit, man. He him coming off the bench for a uh, Dallas or a uh, a Boston or a, mm. a, a, um, a Minnesota, you know what I'm saying? Like he, whether the Pelicans realize his value or whether another team what will, it doesn't, it's not going to diminish his life. But if I'm the Pelicans, yes, if I can get that same buy-in from him, bring in more talent. See, the thing, the thing about him is every year you see at some point he gets hurt. He get his legs start to decline because he's been asked to do a lot. He's been asked to do a lot. He had through all-star weekend, he was great. And then, you know, he hit a wall. Um, He got hurt. And, you know, trying to keep the team in the playoff race, you know, he 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 wasn't good for a portion of – of games started just kind of find itself towards the end of the year again. Um, but it goes back to one of the things we've been saying about the Pelicans all year. Everybody had to work so hard to find a good shot, not a shot, yeah. a good shot, which, yeah. you know, if I'm an older guard, 32, 33 years old, that don't get easier. Your foot, your foot speed declines. Your athleticism is waning. You know what I'm saying? He's already a guy who doesn't have, those things so to speak he relies more on craft he can dribble the hell out the basketball but the thing is is like it's like uh it's like watching brandon try to beat um man who's that i can't think of the who, who did they play i can't remember who it was but austin reeves <laughs> i was trying to watch watching brandon try to beat austin reeves off the dribble and he couldn't get past him and it was yeah. it was like Damn, that may not be good. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and 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 same thing for CJ. Like he, you put a guy like uh, I don't know, Lou Dort on him, right? He gonna terrorize him because CJ would have to, you know, Brandon wasn't all the way right in that playoff series. CJ had to be the guy who could help Brandon shoulder the load, but he wasn't all the way right yeah. either. So that's what she ran into. Um, but I don't think his value declines, in my opinion. And yeah, if I'm the Pelicans, like I said, depending on whatever the goal is, I would then move forward with trying to offer him a contract extension. But I gotta see who, I gotta see what what moves are done in order to for me to give my you know to sign off on it. And I agree. I don't you know um, you know this is more so a question than even you know than a than um, an opinion on saying that the Pelicans should should think about making that move, but I don't, I just don't believe that it's a foregone conclusion that he won't see another contract in New Orleans 
And I mean, and I, I think I just look at it from a value perspective. Sure, if the team is is um is is still average, or if the team is below average, then no. At that point, CJ McCollum's going to want out. He's going to go, want to go in his career regardless. Some place where he has a chance to finally win a championship in a different role. But if there is a situation where he's still producing in the way that he is right now, twenty points close to close to that range, and whether by then he's a six man, um. Or he's still starting, it might be it might be an interesting conversation to have because we're just talking value. And mm. these are some of the deals that he's around right now. And by next year, well, not not you know uh 24, 25, but the following year going into his final um his final year, like that 33 is gonna turn into 30 30 million dollars. It's only his his ranking in regards to being highest paid is only going to drop further and further. Now you're talking about somebody that's going to be hovering around. We're talking, you know, he's in Jordan Poole territory. Some of these guys may end up may end up passing him up. You know, uh, he's around R.J. Barrett, Anthony Simons, Tyler Hero, Devin Devin Fussell. With you know, we're talking. You know, Jalen Brunson is obviously someone who should be a lot higher on this list. Um, I think you, you know Dejounte Murray is on a steal of a contract, um, uh, for better or for worse. But CJ deserves to be in in the conversation with some of these players with with, with the things that he can provide on a basketball floor. And again, the number only is going to he's he's gonna he won't be twenty second next season. You know what I'm saying? There's gonna be multiple guards that pass him up just to do how, just how just because the market how the market works and with this TV money eventually kicking in, it's only a matter of time. And then at that point, I think it would be a fair question. Now, is he the eighth best guard? You know, salary wise, is he worth that amount of money? You shooting guard. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's um it's questionable how long that that should be the case. But again. We talk about shooting guards. Look who's below him. Look who's below him. Mm. Mm. I'd argue, even over Tyler Hero, I'd argue that CJ is. Um, if we're talking, if we're talking impactful, or we're talking just just as a player in today's game, he's right there in regards to being worth the money. I like the contract, and I, I think it's it's worth at least having having a discussion about because, um. It's a decision that the Pelicans will have to consider a year from now, unless they choose to make a move beforehand um, and package his salary someplace else, or he cho- he he asks for a trade, or they look to move him um, for another fitting piece around Zion and come. That was that was the caveat I was going to throw at you. I was going I was going to say, you know, we we're saying would the Pelicans have the means to do or have the option to do? I mean, it's a lot of summer left. Like, what if CJ is also looking around? He's been in this locker room. What if he's looking around and saying, "Yeah, I think I'm about to get the fuck out of here, man. Y'all, y'all can send me to, you know, name whatever team here." Um, you know, I, I think I don't know. I mean, I think that I, I think that would if you trade them Brandon and CJ in the offseason, um. I just got. I guess I got to see what the return is, but I think if CJ asks for a trade, I think you may have to honor it just because of you granted how he, you know, he brought to your team. Yeah, you granted. No, I mean, I'm I'm in agreement with you. You granted 100. percent Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what his value is like around the league. Obviously, it's, it's not. It is one of the. You know, value is one of those things where you never really know until you know, because you 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 see teams all the time, especially the Pelicans, overvalue their own players. Um, I think if the Pelicans, you started to show off looking, you started to show off talking about, um, you know, moves, possible moves. If the Pelicans aren't looking at this with foresight, if they if they trade for CJ and they aren't assessing three, four years down the line at that point, especially once you give them a contract extension in 2022, you have failed because you have to look at CJ as a short-term rental instead of yep. being a part of your core. So if you exactly. if you look at him from perspective of, you know, this guy's going to be around, 
throughout the length of Zion's contract, which is what twenty twenty eight, I think. You yeah. got to you 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 being short sighted because then you got to look at. I mean, I don't mean to, I don't I don't want to put a bad woman on this, but the Zion didn't resign past twenty twenty eight. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just a lot of variables and moving parts that I think if you are if you have CJ contingent upon that or CJ's value contingent upon that, I think you fail. You gotta you gotta turn in the chips whenever you can. One hundred, and, and you know, and I think, look, I mean, you can't have too many more seasons where we're talking about Trey Murphy being being blocked by CJ McCullough in the in the starting lineup or blocked by anybody outside of Zion Williamson. Like they gotta figure out a way to make that work. And if that means that CJ has to come off the bench or CJ has to be traded ultimately, then that's then that's what you do. Um if you're holding on to Herb Jones long long term. You know, you go with it. You you know you are um developing a Jordan Hawkins. You're developing or you're trying to figure out if you can if Dyson Daniels is is, is going to be able to take a you know, an additional leap or step forward as a Pelican, you know, and then, you know, we'll see what, whatever else they, they intend to do. Um, if we're talking about a draft, you know, drafting or whatever the case may be. Um, but at some point we will be, you know, we will be asking where CJ fits in the team's plans. And I'm with you hundred percent. CJ might look around and say, all right, this is, you know, this was, I gave it all I had. Um, you know, I thought we were gonna do something special here. It didn't work. I don't want to spend some of my some of my final years um having the best that physically I can give to a team in a middling situation or a, you know in a in an organization that isn't um capable of putting me in a situation to win big or win a playoff series or win a championship or, or doesn't know how to make that happen. He may choose to, and you couldn't blame him for, it. and that that could ultimately be where we're going. Right. But um, if not, if we're just talking about if this team is winning, and we're just talking about CJ being a productive player in this league, and you could be talking about a different, a possible different role for him. He say, you know what? I like where this is going. I'll take a pay cut here. I'll do this. I have such and such. You, you know, you know my career. I like New Orleans. I like the city. I'm happy with the organization. If that happens, you know, and Trey Murphy's in the starting lineup, you figure out who's your point guard. You still, you know, whether what regardless of whatever you do with Herb and Zion is is has reached another level. At least continuing to build off what we saw last year, you know, I, I think it's a conversation at least worth having. Um, because again, the you know Kevin Durant said years ago when CJ was in his, I think, physical athletic prime, um, not calling him you know, uh, uh, um, an athlete, but when he was at the peak of his powers physically, Kev Durant said the best, you know, his best role on a winning team is a six man. It's going to have to do it eventually. Um, If it's possible that it happens or can't happen in New Orleans, that makes an interesting conversation to what his next step or what something or what um another contract could look like. Cause it will be short term regardless um, in New Orleans um, but you you brought up a good point about Zion though. Yo, before you move on to your Zion point, you know what's interesting? KD mm-hmm. might not see another ring until he buys into a six oh, million. Don't say that. You don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you might I'm be right. Cause, but you, I'm, you, saying, <laughs> like, I'm here to cause controversy, but I'm saying, like, I'm mean, I mean, yo, like, you know, whatever. But anyways, come on, Zion, what you got? No, 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 I, no. I didn't. I didn't have anything additional to add on to that. I was just saying you made a you made a good point in regards to you know by the time we're in the end of CJ's contract, um, what happens with Zion Williamson is going to be right around the corner. So again, for a franchise that, from our perspective, you know, if you are if you are in the organization and you watch these shows, of course you you gonna know you may have an idea of a little bit more than we do, but this is all off. Our perspective, what we know, what we heard, who we talked to, that the Pelicans don't they don't have a five year plan. And if they do, they don't execute it the way it probably should, you know, should be executed. They're not, you know, can they're not strict with it to be able to, you know, if it involves like like they're not they're not gonna fail for a three years in a row and plan it. It just yeah. it unfortunately it's gonna happen organically. Versus them saying, all right, 
We're gonna plan. We you know. You know. We plan to. We, we plan to be horrible. God off for these first two three years. We're gonna get these kind of salaries. Get these kind of contracts. Gather up as many draft picks as possible. Find out what fits best around our best player, our best two players, and then we gonna make a move. With small market, this is the way we need to operate. Pelicans kind of feel like they just, you know, they, you know, they like a, a pay as you go kind of uh, phone yeah. bill situation. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what the Pelicans are? They meander along until like they about to default on a loan. You know, you know what the Pelicans are? <laughs> the Pelicans are they are um they're Klarna. <laughs> like they are firm, like they pay in installments. They are, you know, you can stretch it. Do they? Out. Well, I mean, <laughs> but do they? I mean, that's another. That's a whole other podcast. If you if you want to, <laughs> if, if you want to talk about that, but they, <laughs> but but just being, I'm saying just just from being in a in a, in a spot of being in the forefront of like you know we talked about i think you gave me this point but i said it yesterday on pro pals talk well they don't operate from the bill belichick standpoint of you know whoever's value is the highest you know we 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 moving on that like I don't know if we did we record that or what we talking off we did we did we was talking we was talking off camera about the about bill belichick um, not just in his heyday, but a lot of times in New England, seeing individual success from certain from certain guys and saying, "I'd rather trade them a year too, you know, a year early than a year too late." Like Hall of yeah. Fame level looking players, like Pro Bowl players, all Pro style players, players that help them win championships, and saying, "All right, um, I see the end of this and what this could look like." I'd rather move it now and have to be confused versus yep. trying to get rid of them and nobody wants them. It's foresight. And that doesn't mean it always works, but it gotta, you know, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be afraid to, you know, like, like you can't be afraid to fail. You gotta take a chance, dog. Happen. You gotta take yeah. a chance. And I think, I think that's one thing for the Pelicans. They've been moving from a position of like small market team, you know, I, I got to just take what I'm giving. Kind of like the residents of the city of New Orleans with, like, a lot of things. Like, we don't necessarily have the pushback or we don't push back because, you know, that's just the way it's been. That's just how it is here. Like, to be honest, like, that's just not good enough. That That's not good enough. You, you are worth more than that. And you should operate from the perspective of being worth more than that. The, the, um, the Portland Trailblazers... They moved too late. They moved CJ way too late. They way too late. Way, way too late. They moved Dame way too late. Yep. yep. Um, a team without a plan, right? Like a team yep. without a plan. The Pelicans probably moved Brandon Ingram way too late. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you don't want to get caught looking. You don't want to get caught, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit. Oh, wait, we got to do it now? Cause not every the jig is up. Everybody, everybody seen. knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> everybody knows. You're not catching anybody by surprise. Yep. You know, and <laughs> yeah, and like, and you never, you never want to make the call, trying to trying to move something that everybody know you're looking to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. like, like you, you never want to be that person. And you know, I think you know, regardless of whatever happens with CJ, and I think you know, honestly, you know, I mean, to be fair. We having this conversation to create content and just you know just talk and see what see yeah. what people think in the comments and so on and so forth about his future and about where he sits currently in the league or the, or the, the thoughts about him coming into the next season. And you made a good point about it being really it's kind of to be determined because you don't know who's going to be the you know the second best player on this team. You know you don't know if they're going to be able to trade for if they're going to trade Brandon Ingram for Dejounte Murray or. Trey Young, or if Brand Hell, if Brandon Ingram ends up suiting up at some 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 point in the year for the New Orleans Pelicans, somehow they trade for Car Anthony Towns, whatever the case may be, that will determine a lot in this conversation. But no matter where it goes, um, even if you believe that he's more likely to not sign another extension, which I I could see that and get with that, um, that's where the odds would probably be right now if this was on DraftKings. Um, <laughs> but I think either way, no matter what the Pelicans decide to do, 
whether they resign, whether they trade, whether they um, whether they ultimately let them walk, whatever the decision is, I hope that they do it with some type of foresight versus waiting and you know letting Lonzo Ball walk for you know be traded for a second round pick and Thomas Sadoransky when you could have traded him at the deadline if you knew you weren't going to bring him back or trading Drew Holiday a year too late or um the situation you're in now with with Brandon Ingram, Jones Valanciunas and that situation the list goes on and on with some of the things they waited too late to make a move on Jackson Hayes missing on you know trading Jackson Hayes instead of oh, I'm sorry trading to kill Alexander Walker instead of trading Jackson Hayes when his value was at the highest his value was at the highest and what you probably could have mind blowing Jax had was playing better at the time that they added to kill Alexander Walker to that Portland trade than 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 Null was and they knew Null was the better worker they knew Null probably had the better overall um you know, um, I guess future in the league, but they chose to stick with something that they had seen already with flashes in the pan and good stretches of basketball in Jackson Hayes and in the back fine. And he also walks for nothing. So, and there's, I'm sure that there's a lot of other players that I'm missing or forgetting about here over this stretch that the Pelicans have waited too long on. I'm hoping no matter what they choose to do with CJ, um, even though we are, um, you know, another season away from really being deep into this conversation away, I hope they make the con- I hope I hope they don't even make the payment on time. I damn sure hope they don't make it late. I want Bro, them to make the payment early. You just pissed me off with the Jackson Hayes thing. I, <laughs> I couldn't. It's crazy, dog. I was yelling. At, I was yelling for them to make that move. I just. I don't. I was about to say, I understand why you traded now, but I don't understand why you traded now right there. I don't understand why oh, yeah. you did it right there. You didn't have to you Man. didn't have to do that. And and Man. to be honest, he'd have been a perfect I'm glad he I'm glad he realized his spot in the league and that his his spot in the league was in jeopardy. But I think CJ would have been a perfect guard for him to learn from yep. as far as offensive preparation and like just taking what the defense gives you instead of like trying to make it look pretty. You know what I'm saying? Trying yeah. to score in a particular way. Um, let's hey look, I don't know how much longer the show will go, but I got a question for you. 2020, yeah. 2026, 2027 season. Let's 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 make a prediction. CG on the team, or is he is he on another team? What you what you how you how you call him? I I ultimately think he's gone. Yeah. Um I just don't think it's a foregone conclusion, but but I do think he's gone. I think by then, you're either looking at at CJ that's gonna wanna he's gonna wanna go to a contending team and sign a team friendly, you know, situation. He he would have made um, enough money, and he would probably be looking to put himself in the best situation to be a part of a winning situ a winning possibility um, towards a championship, or. Um, you're looking at the Pelicans that would have decided already. Well, um, maybe by that time, Jordan Hawkins is going to be in the starting lineup, or maybe Dyson Daniels figures it out, or maybe you traded for Trey Young, you've traded for DeJounte Murray, and you're looking for, um, you know, uh, at that point, Trey Murphy's in the starting lineup. You know what I'm saying? Um, and CJ's done his job, and you thank him for his services, and you move forward. That's probably the most likely. Trey moving into the starting lineup. You got her. You got Zion. You figure out your center, and you either move assets now or down the line. To I mean, hell, CJ himself could be involved in a deal that lands you a point guard. But I think that probably makes the most sense as we stand here today. What do you think? I think the 25, 26 season for me. I think that season is the one where you probably relieve CJ of his services either way if he either if he requests a trade or either if it's you know he teams are looking at him as a as a as a a valuable tool because he's an expiring contract I think yeah that's probably the year where you see it happen um I do agree with you I think that at a certain point should Brian go be what 40 
two. Bron still might be a Laker playing very yeah. hard. I could. Yeah. I've been. I've been saying this for a while. I could see him going to LA and playing with Bron. It just seems. I don't know. They just two very high IQ guys. It just, it just seems like they. Yeah. Bron always finds his way to older guards with high IQ who can help him win. Yep. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that. 25, 26 years, he's out of here. And, you know, <laughs> bro, if it's 25, 26, and we still talking about the Pelicans trying to find a way to start Trey Murphy, oh, my God, just give it up. Just, I just, just I, look, man. Um, and I, I agree with you from that from that uh, perspective as well. Um, we shouldn't be having a conversation at that point about Trey Murphy being in the starting lineup. They should at that point have figured out a way to to um to to get a point guard um or to get a fitting you know s- someone who fits what they're trying to do going forward at that position um but yeah man i mean whether that means that you're using his salary as a as um his talent and him being an expiring contract to go someplace else for a second year i mean well for the half of a season or you do it in the in in the off season whatever the case may be i just want to say no matter what for all the things he can't do for his basketball iq and his processing speed sometimes not being on the same the same line for some of the you know the turnovers and some of the over dribbling and the, the you know the bad shots tough shots being a small guard not being a great defender whatever you got to say 20 points what is it? Four, four, four rebounds. What close to six assists? Forty-two percent three-point shooting. Eighty percent from the free throw line. Forty-five percent from the field. I believe it don't grow on trees. Stellar, stellar. It don't grow on trees, and he puts in the work enough to be able to replicate that again at least for another couple of years, even if it doesn't make sense for him to be in the world that's going forward. But. So for this man, you know, we're gonna have other other shows, man. Just you know, just talking talking shit, man, coming up with different um I mean the whole the whole platform in itself, you know what I mean? You know, you know, for uh for myself, for Lido, for you know, for, uh, for five, for Chaz, what are we gonna do with Propels talk? I don't give a fuck who you are, you will run out of things to talk about. You will run out of things to talk about. We will run out, we will run out of time and shows to continue putting the same topics into the ground. These are the kind of things that I think, uh, you know, are kind of fun to speculate on, even if they are way, way down the line. Pelicans got other pressing things. Um, in way. Closing, Lito, you got anything? Um, I would say, yo, if y'all watching this, if you get a chance to watch the show, um, Chris and I both say probably 25, 26 seasons, CJ is out. Leave your thoughts in the comments, I would say. Uh, when you think his departure might be, or or if he resigns, you know what I'm saying? Because also we don't have a problem with him. So we we, we just talking basketball. No 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 bias here. Um, also, I would say if y'all have any ideas for shows, if you got anything you want to hear us talk about, like bro, we done for. It. Like we don't want y'all to think we just trying to trade people or get people off the team. But like Chris said, it's like, what the fuck do you, it would like, it's, it's June 2nd, like what June 3rd, what do you, what do you talk about? There's nothing going on. So if y'all have any, any ideas, any topics, any, um, any, any anything you want us, us to specifically discuss, man, drop a note in the comments. Like we, we done for that. For sure, man. Like comment, share, watch everything that, that boot crew's putting out, man. Watch, watch every show um, that we putting together. Watch um watch the recent Propels talk show that came out. Watch uh you know Chaz's upcoming and recent show. Watch the show that Five has on the way. Watch the show that we're about to do very shortly. Um you know a nice little film breakdown for someone in the comments who asked for it. I believe. Yeah. Um yep. so uh, you know what I mean. But shout out to y'all man. They keep you know they keep pulling up while actual teams can about to compete for a championship. You know, we just talking about how to uh, win 50 games um, or, you know, but Hey, for myself again, for Lido, how at y'all next time. I sit here and I we zone out. You dig zone, and just man. appreciate how it came and thank God for the blessings.